Welcome to Vital 100, the podcast designed to take your health to the next level. How would you like to take the most important test you will ever take in your life? We're going to discuss that today in a very exciting interview with an expert in the field of genetics, genetic evaluations, and why everyone should get a genetic test to optimize their overall health and to recover from illnesses. Today I'm going to be talking about the genetics and and talking with the expert in the field, Dr. Charles Gant, who has spent huge amounts of research time uh, researching this burgeoning field of genetics and genetic evaluation. He actually works with me at National Integrated Health Associates in Washington, D.C. So, without further ado, hello, Dr. Gant. Hello. Very excited to have you on this, and with that introduction, I'd like you to tell me a little bit bit more about how you did get into genetic evaluations and kind of some definitions so people understand it a little bit better. Ever since I was in medical school in uh, the early 70s, I've been practicing medicine a long time, I was told that all disease, and this is the policy of the Center for Disease Control, all disease, illnesses, syndromes, everything, is caused by the, an interaction of two factors. Your genes interacting with environmental conditions is what causes everything. So the human genome was not finally released, discovered until 2003. I was getting ready to retire around then. And um, a few years later, the study of the human genome became very practical and very helpful in defining why we get sick from anything. so I was, I put off my retirement because I was so excited by this that I, I sold my house in Florida and came back up here uh, because I wanted to be a part of this revolution that I won't live to see, but it's going to completely revolutionize medicine because now we can get the genetic fingerprint of an individual and we can see how that interacts with environmental stressors like Lyme and chronic infections or toxins like heavy metals, nutritional deficiencies, lack of exercise, lifestyle factors. They're interacting with our genes. And not only can we see if that works, we can change the expression of our genes. So the genes are the genes, but we can turn some on and turn some off. So it has a huge influence on our health. Before I ask you some of the definitions, I had mentioned in the introduction that this was truly the most important test that anyone will ever take in their life. Tell me why you can validate that and and say that is indeed the case. Well, I do a lot of, as you know, a lot of metabolic testing too, and immunological, toxicological tests of gastrointestinal function, and a lot of basic physiological testing. So sometimes it's hard to say what is the most important. We can say that it'll be a long time till we have genetic engineering where we can change our genes themselves, but the ability to, to, to modify the expression of genes is something that you can do for the rest of your life. So by modifying certain genes that do bad things, your lifespan can be can uh, be increased by decades. So we can add life to the years and years to life. So the genetic, the metabolic testing comes and goes because we get well from infections, we get detoxified, we get we deal with different things, but the genes are the genes and they will always be in the background potentially influencing our health. So what you're saying is that based on our uh, genetic makeup, what we get from our mother and father and from previous generations, even though you have a tendency or a genetic 
proclivity to have a certain disease or illness or condition, you can make that happen or make those genes not express themselves by what you do. Expand on that a little bit. Well, um, we all have a few million quirky variants in our genes. So it's, it would be uh, the, the same as it's tantamount to reading a book and you see that a word is misspelled or it's a different word. And usually that doesn't change. You just go right over it. You notice, you know it's a mistake and you go right over it doesn't change the reading of the book and understanding the plot. But every once in a while you could replace a word with a different word and it changes the whole meaning of the story. So the few million variants that every person has, um, of those, so far we've come up with several hundred that are very, very common. Why test for something rare? They're um, very important. Why test for a variant that doesn't do anything different to you? Your genetic code is just read over as normal. So important and modifiable. Why test for a, a variant that you can't do anything about? So common, important, and modifiable. So there's several hundred of these genes that we test in every person, and the average person will have about 20 or 30, maybe 40, that are very important. And we can, through lifestyle, supplements, even using some medication at times, we can change the expression of those genes. We can make them do this instead of that. And if they're going to do something that could harm us, we want to turn that off. Right. Could you define a couple things for our audience? Uh, for instance, mutations, genomics, um, genetic testing, gene SNPs, those kind of things, so people can get a little bit better handle on this incredible field. Sure. I mean, this whole field has its own, I call it genobabble. It has its own terminology, and once you understand some of the basic terminology and what it means, then you can pretty much understand what what we're, what is happening. The most important thing is to is to is to make a uh, differentiate the difference between genetics and genomics. Genetics has been around a long time. It's a field of medicine, very specialized, and it looks at very rare genes and their influence on causing severe disease, like cystic fibrosis, for instance. If you have the genes for that, they take a lot of work to do something about it because you can be very, very sick. Genomics is not about rare, terrible genes. It's about very common, but nevertheless important genes that can influence uh, how we can add life to our years or years to our life. So they can influence mood, they can influence uh, the way that we, how much vitamin C we need because we're all trying to do something about oxidative stress or oxidative injury and that kind of thing. They, they fall in a, in a bunch of different categories. And But genomics is about very common important modifiable genes, whereas genetics is about very rare, terrible genes that can make people extremely sick. And and what about the term mutation as opposed to uh, genetic variation? Exactly. Great, great question. Yeah, the mutation is more of a genetic issue, and the variant or polymorphism, see this is the, the terms, poly means many forms, polymorphism or single nucleotide. The nucleotide is what the one of the f- four bases that all of our DNA is made of, it's called a nucleotide. So when there is a 
a nucleotide that substitutes for another one. That's the variant I was talking about, that we have millions of these variants. But most of the time, they don't make any difference, or at least science has not advanced to the stage where it can see that a certain SNP or single nucleotide polymorphism makes any difference at all. So you'll, as you get into it, you'll hear this term SNP, which is a nice abbreviation, which stands for the quirky substitution, a SNP. And uh, that's one of the terms to learn. So, so most of them don't matter as far as we can tell, but there are, like I say, three or 400 or maybe 500 of these SNPs that can greatly influence the way we feel and function and they can add or detract years from our lifespan. So um, uh, if I may make an example here, what, what I think you're saying is that uh, a gene variation could be someone who has blue eyes versus green eyes. Um, right. or, and, and, a, and a mutation may be uh, something that damages the genes and causes cancer or some... Or have no eyes. Oh, okay. Mm. They're severe. Mutations are severe, and they're oftentimes spontaneous, which means that they're not carried over necessarily from generation to generation. They're something that suddenly appeared because there was a major damage to the genes from some cause like radiation or something. Right, right. So who should or who would be most benefited by doing a gene test? I know we all would to some extent, but who are the people who would really benefit by considering doing a genetic test? Well, if there's a chronic disorder, a mood disorder, uh, a chronic gastrointestinal disorder, a chronic high blood pressure, a chronic medical or psychological condition that nobody's been able to help anybody with. And um, it's been around a long time. They've tried everything. Nothing seems to work. They're the, they're the people that would benefit the most from this kind of thing. But there's this other group of people who are already well, but, you know, they're, they're doing things like exercising and eating right and so forth. They want to live a long time. They want to extend their life. So there's, there's that whole group of people that, that want to know what they can do to add years to life and life to their years. Mm-hmm. And what are some of the things you advise people? I know it varies from genetic makeup from one person to another, but some of the things you advise them that will help them be healthier based on their genetic testing. Suppose somebody has a, gastro, a chronic gastrointestinal problem. Their whole life they've had, they're, they're, they tend to have indigestion, maybe they have irritable bowel syndrome, maybe even Crohn's disease. Well, there's a very well-known polymorphism that causes this. And all you have to do is get tested, and the testing is very inexpensive. We probably should talk about how people test and how inexpensive it is. We'll do the um, logistics in just a second, but go ahead with this. Okay. So there, there's a, a, a polymorphism called FUT2, fucosal transferase. So if you go in Wikipedia and you put F as a track, UT2, you'll see this common variant that... Um, um, people could have and they'll have a whole description of what it means. So these common, these genes that are common under certain circumstances, they confer benefits. Otherwise they would have been weeded out of the human genome long ago. So about 15, 18% of people have significant FUT2 polymorphisms. And the reason it's common is because it protects you from being infected by the number one virus in the, in the world, the norovirus. So if you were to go on a cruise and everybody on a cruise got sick and you have that gene, you will not get sick. You're totally invulnerable, virtually invulnerable to the norovirus, which is reputed to kill upwards of a half a million babies every year because babies get, get, um, uh, uh, inflammation in the intestines from, from this virus and 
they get severe diarrhea and they get dehydrated and nobody can help them. Well, you can see the advantage to having this gene because this neurovirus can't infect you. But on the other hand, you have lifelong indigestion and inflammation because this gene does not allow you, if you have the polymorphisms, the variants, you may be protected from the norovirus, but you can't feed your good flora and your intestines, mm. your acidophilus and bifidus. So you, you just live with chronic inflammation in your intestines your whole life. Right. So, so some of the things you advise are obviously dietary changes, maybe yeah. environmental changes, uh, things they do in their life, lifespan, those kind of things. As a, yeah, so, as a counter to bad genetics. Well, see, it's, it is bad, but it's common because it can do good things. Mm -hmm. see, that's, the, that's the thing. These are common genes because under certain circumstances, you, they protect you. Right? But anyway, people that have this, this quirky gene that can't feed the good flora in their intestines, that food agent is in certain vegetables like garlic, um, uh, broccoli, cruciferous vegetables, leeks, Jerusalem artichoke. So when we see people have this gene, we, say, we tell them right away, you've got to get some of these foods in your diet all the time. Interesting. And that counteracts the genetic weakness. And then we give them, of course, some acidophilus, some bifidus to get started, some good flora. And they come back three weeks later and they say, First time in my life I haven't had indigestion. Thank you very much. So it sounds like anybody who has these irritating conditions in their life, maybe not so life-threatening, but irritating conditions, these should be people who get genetic testing. Yeah, they can be life-threatening too. I mean, the, the number one illness in the world is depression. So... Uh, if you have genes where you can't make certain neurotransmitters very well, we have ways of helping you do that to make the neurotransmitters naturally so that you compensate for that. And they'll usually say, you know, in my family, there's people that a lot of this bipolar and depression or whatever. So you, you, you know right away you're going to find the genes for why you can't make serotonin or dopamine or GABA, the brain's natural valium these common neurotransmitters, mm -hmm. very common genetic polymorphisms that can be uh, easily overcome. Right. Well, we're going to talk more in a next interview with you about some conditions you've worked with and had some successes, but could we end this by you going over the logistics of when, how, cost, that kind of thing of doing a genetic test? Yeah, this is one of the things that's so exciting is that the expense has come way down on all of this. So there are different platforms that can be used. I like the 23andMe platform. And if anybody's worried about getting their gene test, it's perfectly okay to use a different name and a different address of a friend so if you want to maintain your confidentiality. But anyway, the, the, um, the 23andMe comes in two pricings. They have the higher pricing level, $200, and they have the lower pricing one of, of $100. We only need the $100 one because the FDA does not allow them to tell you exactly what your genes are because they're afraid that by doing that, people will misinterpret what they're reading and be scared. So they basically don't let them tell you they let them tell you about your genes or if you have a long lost relative in utah or something but they, they can't tell you exactly what the genes are but they will give you a link to your genes right right and so for 30 dollars more we use an app mthfrsupport.com which is one of the best conversions of the genes to a very, very nice report. Now, they haven't interpreted it for you, but they at least will pop out the most common, important, modifiable genes to work with. And then we look through that to see if, how, 
how many of the homozygous ones you have, especially. That means you get a quirky gene from both parents. Mm -hmm. If you get a good one from one pair and a quirky one from another, the good one will usually compensate for the for the weird one. So basically, for 130 bucks, you can get four or five hundred of the most common, important, and modifiable genes that there are, and you can start making the changes to change your genetic expression to improve your health. Wow. And, and so what is the actual process of getting a, a genetic sample or being able to do that? Yes, yeah, a saliva test. So you go online, www.23andme.com. And most people, they've done a million tests apparently on people. And they, people do it for their ancestry. But you get that result for 100 bucks. It's a slot, so they'll, they'll send you a saliva t- kit, you spit in it, send it in, register it online. Three weeks later or so, you get the report back. Not the genes, but you get the link. Right. And then you, and you get the mthfrsupport.com app. And you run the link through that app, and boom, you've got, the, you've got your full report. Great. Well, this is very exciting. We are going to have... Uh, our next interview of you um, going over some specific examples of cases you've had. But I want to thank you very much for doing this. And as I said in the introduction, as people can see, this is indeed the most important test they will ever take, considering that your health is probably the most important thing that you have in life. And your genetic evaluation and following recommendations are going to be critical to a long, healthy, and enjoyable life. You can reach Dr. Gant at www.nihadc.com. And the number of the clinic that he works at, does his amazing work, is 202-237-7000. And ask for Dr. Charles Gant. So I want to thank you very much, Dr. Gant, and uh, very informative, and I look forward to our next interview. Very good. Take care. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Vital 100. Please check out our website, vital100wellness.com, for other ways to listen to our podcast, as well as additional health resources. If you have questions for Dr. Bob, Or if you have feedback or recommendations for the podcast, please send an email to info at vital100wellness.com.